Hi, so today for a bit different of a video I'll be fixing a few things. First patient is this ancient calculator. As you can see it's pretty damaged but that's actually my job. I got it as a kid and took it apart and <laughs> broke it. Uh, then I tried fixing it and did a pretty terrible job at it. As you can see the wires are well poorly soldered and some of them are broken off. This chip, sadly, is nowhere to be found online. Same goes for the transistors it drives. The tube looks really nice though, and is the main reason I decided to fix this. Okay, so let's start. As you can see, I disordered all the wires and cleaned up the connections. One of them, sadly, is ripped off the PCB. The keyboard also has two parts broken off. I was always 100% sure I had the plug for this calculator. I kept the plug exactly for the purpose of fixing it. And now, when I tried to find it, I couldn't. So sadly, I had to do this very dodgy connection to power it up. Okay, so let's do just that. And hey, it works. It displays what should have been a zero. I guess the C fragment of the display isn't connected somehow. After a bit of inspection, I found the datasheet for the tube online, which was really helpful. I found which pin was the anode of the C section of the display, and what do you know, the transistor there was disconnected. Okay, so let's resolder that. Excuse the quality of the shot. I had to solder with both of my hands and <laughs> hold the camera. Um, yeah, on my head, basically. And what do you know, it works, we got a zero. Nice, so now let's move on to the keyboard, which is gonna be the really hard part. But before I fixed it, or tried fixing it, I wanted to see how it performed the way I left it. And as you can see, it doesn't function very well. The keyboard also is very old, so it takes some key presses to actually get the number in, so that's an issue. There were no schematics online or any photos, so I had to figure out a way to do this. Luckily I noticed that on the back of the keyboard there were metal clips which actually corresponded to the keys on the front. They were actually the parts, the moving parts that were connecting and disconnecting as you press the buttons. So with that and a little bit of measuring I managed to get the pin out of the board. So after what felt like ages of measuring around I finally got a working configuration, almost working anyway. I actually meant to press 2 here, and it's input 22. That's an issue with the keyboard and I don't want to crack it open, so that will have to stay. Also the square root doesn't work. Knowing, or kind of knowing, the pinout of the board and the fact that it was the square root, the zero and the dot that didn't work, I followed the wire that they corresponded to and found out that it was actually a break in the PCB trace. So let's resolder that and see what that gives us. Okay, so after that change it actually works. As I said, the keyboard is kind of broken and doesn't work still, but I don't want to attempt to fix that because I probably couldn't put it back together once I crack it open. I don't have the case for this too, sadly, but once I find it, if I find it, I will update this. Later I decided to replace the caps as I thought that those may be rotten. Let's see if that was actually true. As you can see the capacitance measures about right. Let's see if it's leaking any DC though. And here we go, a hundred kilo ohms across the cap. That's really bad, so I'm glad I replaced it. Okay, so as you can see I also found the cord for this calculator, so that's pretty cool. And I also redid the wiring on the keyboard. It's, well, about as reliable as it was. It's probably due to the dirt in between the keys. Either way, the wiring now is pretty robust, so that should last. Okay, so on to the next patient. This one is a Soviet radio that, as you can see, somebody was nice enough to spray paint at the top of, so I can't read much of that. Here you can see a photo of it, I found it somewhere online. 
Anyway, I was already in this radio and fixed a few things, but I wanted to give it a finishing touch, so I'll share that with you. Opening the lid, we can see that luckily this thing is not rusted inside. It looks pretty fine in general. There was once a Zenier diode here, but it shorted and caused the chokes to burn, so I had to skip it. I actually found the Zener diode that was in there previously and as you can see when I connect my power supply across it it's just a dead short so that had to be replaced. Sadly the Zener diodes in such a package are nowhere to be found. There was this random wire just hanging there for no reason so I'll probably be disordering that. So I powered it up with 12 volts and as you can see it's drawing about 200 milliamps, but that's fine. And it actually is receiving. It can also display time as you can see, so that's a pretty cool add-on, I guess. Uh, it has three ranges and frequencies, uh, but I'm actually not sure what they mean because I don't know the Russian alphabet, sadly. But it receives, so that's, that's good. Popping the RF section of the radio, I immediately spotted this electrolytic cap, which is kind of surprising to me, and also an inductor consisting of a single turn of wire. You love to see it. Somebody obviously was in this radio before me. Uh, as you can see, this inductor was detuned and sealed with uh, hot glue. The rest is sealed with wax. Also, some capacitors have been replaced, they visually stand out from the other grey cans. I grabbed one of the caps that was in the radio to check if it was still electrically good, and uh, as you can see, its capacitance measures in the range of all the way from 0 to 70 microfarad. That's probably due to my poor handling of the probes though, and its internal resistance is around 2 mega ohms. So all of those are getting replaced. And I bought a whole bunch of new caps. As you can see, the old ones have been replaced. I also tried fixing the chokes that were a little bit melted and replaced the audio wires and the power supply wires and also the speaker. I also tried tuning the little variable inductors and resistors, but that didn't improve anything really. Okay, so now let's test how it actually receives. I'll be speeding up the process of tuning because it took me quite a while to find anything. And when I did, you can hear my reaction because what I found was a very, the most religious radio station in Poland, basically. <laughs> okay, so I'll be sparing you from actually translating that. You can do that if you want, but really it's not that interesting. Anyway, it receives pretty clearly, uh, although there's not, there was not many stations on at the time I was doing this. But it works nicely and it's a nice piece of tech, so I'm glad I restored it. Okay, so next up is this old clamp multimeter. As you can see, it goes up to 300 amps. It also has other ranges like volts and apparently even kilo ohms. I think the current measurement will be the most handy though. Opening it up, we can see that it's actually quite crammed in there. It's an electronic sandwich. I really like this selection knob though. It's pretty neat that it has a cylinder inside with everything printed. And this is actually the clamp. We can see all the windings. One wire was disconnected inside, so obviously I'll be resoldering that. And it's done. I also noticed that the cylinder with all the ranges on it is actually uh, what holds the battery in place. So that's a really, really clever design. I like that. Okay, so now I'll be trying to open it up. Despite my senses telling me not to, I will try to get inside this, uh, this little box and see what's wrong. Because the ohms measurement still doesn't work. 
And as we can see, some inductors and some resistors. It's really quite simple. Also two diodes, germanium possibly. Uh, two of the inductors were actually burnt. Somebody must have connected the, I don't know, voltage when he was trying to measure ohms probably. And <laughs> the lead is gone, just like that. It's getting pretty nice now. <laughs> I was pretty upset with that, but we'll figure something out. Okay, so I stripped all the wire of the little core and I found a spool of wire with the exact, well, judging by the eye, it's a pretty similar diameter to the old coil. And here you can see me winding it. Yay, it's actually the second core where the lead didn't break off. And looking under the rotary switch, we can see that there was some serious arcing inside. I have sadly no idea how it was connected before, so it will be hard to get this to work again. Okay, so I got the multimeter hooked up to my Variac. I won't be bringing it up to, well, 230 volts though, because I'm scared there may be an internal arc over. As you saw, it was pretty crammed in there. But it measures, so that's pretty good. Also, I found this sticker that was on there. So now I think this restoration is complete. The current measurement probably works. <laughs> Actually, let me test that. Okay, so as you can see, the meter is clamped across one of the supply leads that go to my vacuum tube Tesla coil. And it certainly is drawing some current. I just need to properly align it and it will be a nice addition to my tools. Okay, so that would be it for today. Um, I hope you enjoyed, sorry if the video was a bit boring, but yeah, I, I found it kind of interesting to record just the repairs and uh, yeah, so stay safe out there <laughs> during these odd times and see you next time because there's more videos coming certainly.